Hi class, today we're taking a look at estuaries and this picture here from Lake Clark National Park, Alaska does a great job of uh, describing what uh, an estuary looks like. So an estuary is any semi-enclosed basin where river water or streams come into contact with the ocean. So you can see here we've got the river moving through and then somewhat of a tidal flat where the mixing of uh, our tides uh, is happening with the uh, um, the estuary itself. So we're going to go through the geologic types of estuaries uh, today and you can see that there are four different types of geologically described estuaries. The first one is coastal plain and that's probably the most common and it's found right there on that border between the coastline and the ocean. Uh, the second uh, is called a fjord and you're only going to find a fjord in areas that have glaciers like New Zealand uh, and Alaska and Norway and then uh, bar built um, basically any location that has a pronounced uh, elongated sandbar next to the coastline it could lead to um, a bar built estuary and then finally the idea of tectonic and so we're going to be looking at sort of two aspects one uh, is going to be the overall shape uh, which can really help in determining what type of uh, estuary you have. And then second, we're gonna look at the um, ocean floor or the bathymetry of those particular estuaries. All right, so let's go through and talk about them. The first example, we're gonna call a coastal plain estuary. And again, a river is gonna come into contact with the ocean. And let me set the stage a little bit, if you think well, the last ice age uh, was about 15 to 20,000 years ago. And at that time, most of the water on our planet, or freshwater anyway, was locked up in these massive glaciers. And so then as these glaciers melted, water levels, sea level went up. So again, you can imagine here, if the water level was down in the area of my cursor, over time, the water began to move up as glaciers melted. And so then the water's gonna go into these river valleys and ultimately that is going to form the coastal plain estuary. A couple of features of the coastal plain estuary, one you notice here is that there's gonna be a delta right where the river meets the ocean. And that delta is because now tides are pushing back a little bit, the water is slowing down, sediments that were carried by the river are gonna to fall to create that delta. The most classic example uh, is the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, in our lab class, we're going to be investigating some uh, more details about the Chesapeake Bay. But as you take a look over here, you can see all kinds of different tributaries of smaller streams and rivers that are connecting into the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, you've got the Nonserrat Bay here as well. And you can again see as the water moves back, there are these rivers and tributaries that are going into it. But overall, the coastal plain estuary has a lot of different fingers um, as you're progressing back uh, towards the river systems. The second example uh, is that of a fjord. And a fjord, again, you can think of as a massive bulldozer. Well, the glacier was a massive bulldozer. It pushed until it couldn't push no more. And then you have a buildup of what was dropped by the glacier, and that is called sill. So every fjord is going to have this big pileup called sill. And it's going to have steep walls on either side. And the depth of the water of the fjord is going to be very, very deep. So that's sort of the general characteristics of a fjord. If you take a look here, it's a great picture of an Alaskan fjord. You can got steep sides here, steep side and here, and then a very um, sort of narrow uh, access to the ocean. It's also, because most times there is also gonna be a glacier at the end of it, cruise ships will then go into the fjord and watch uh, the glacier break apart. 
The next example are our bar built estuaries and a bar built estuary could be a sand spit, could be a bay mouth bar, could be a barrier island, but anywhere you've got sand piling up and a lagoon behind and a river moving into it, you're gonna have what's considered a bar built estuary. Now the bar built estuaries, because again, they're depositionally formed, are gonna be somewhat uh, shallower and so they're not very deep. Now we've got on the East Coast and on our Gulf Coast, these enormous barrier islands. So that's one location uh, where you can almost always find a bar built estuary. This example is from Pamlico Sound in North Carolina. These are the most classic barrier islands, I think, on the East Coast. Um, you can see the sandbar extending all the way through here. And um, you also have a lot of different river systems that are going into it. But ultimately, the estuary is formed by this barrier island, which again is made up completely uh, sand that's moving down the coast to the south in both the east and the west coast. Okay, so our final example is that of a tectonic estuary. And a tectonic estuary is going to have a couple classic features. One, obviously, there needs to be a fault or multiple faults. Here in San Francisco, San Francisco Bay, you have uh, the enormous San, uh, the San Andreas Fault and there's going to be subsidence. So these two are going to be somewhat deep. And in addition to that, uh, they're going to be extremely linear and uh, oftentimes very long. Well, hopefully that gives you a pretty good sense of uh, what's going on in terms of uh, glaciers and uh, estuaries. And um, 